and welcome to episode eight of A Yarn Tale. My name is Karen, and today I'm coming to you from Cape Elizabeth, Maine, where I'm staying with my husband, our three kids, and our dog, Max. So today's gonna be a little bit different of an episode because we are on vacation, so I don't have all my projects with me, but I did bring a few, and I wanna show you some of the, project, some of the progress that I've made. And I also wanna announce the winners of the giveaway. So last episode, or mini episode, um, we were celebrating having 500 subscribers, so um, I wanted to give away these two beautiful sock sets by Madison and State. Uh, Madison and State is a yarn dyer that's located in Chicago, where I am from. <laughs> and um, if you commented on the last mini episode, then you were entered to win. And I ended up just leaving it open until yesterday night because I um, it was a little bit crazy town trying to get everybody packed up uh, to drive across the country. And I didn't get to film, um, pick a winner and film the episode before we left, even though I really wanted to. <laughs> so um, I did it here. So if you commented late, don't worry, you were in there too. And uh, I will, uh, at the end of the episode, announce two winners, uh, one who won this one and one who won this one. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's get right into it. Knitting, knitting. Um, okay, so we were traveling. So I'm usually from Chicago and my whole family, <laughs> all five of us and our dog piled into the minivan um, to drive from Chicago to Portland, Maine. And during that time, I wasn't sure what kind of knitting I could do, if it's even possible to knit in the car. I've never really tried. I don't get that car sick, so I figured it would be okay. But I packed um, some car knitting. It was sock number two of my, well, these were supposed to be done in April. <laughs> so I've been calling them my April socks, even though it's now July. So I don't know, call them whatever you want, but it's just a toe up vanilla sock in self striping yarn by Nomadic Yarns. This is the colorway old friend. It is 7525 um, superwash merino and nylon, and it is beautiful. I did it toe up. And after my debacle with the first sock where I made it just way too big, <laughs> um, I, I'm just knitting a tube and I'm going to do an afterthought heel when I'm done with it. But so I knit on this in the car a ton. I basically did the whole thing. I had the toe done when I started um, just because I didn't think I'd be able to do a toe up sock in the car with a dog on my lap and some kids in the back. <laughs> So I just knit round and round on DPNs and it was, it was pretty good. Like it worked. I got a ton done. Um, now here's my problem. I did not pack my first sock cause I honestly didn't think I'd get that far. I'm a slow knitter and I'm a super slow sock knitter as evidenced by the fact that I was going to do a pair every month this year. And I have two completed pairs and a couple of single socks and it's July. <laughs> So I didn't think it would be an issue, but it looks like I'm getting pretty far down. I have small feet. So I think I put the after that heel in between the purple and the green there. So I'm pretty, I'm getting pretty far based. So I was worried. I was actually thinking we have someone who's getting our mail and I um, was thinking of asking her to run upstairs and rummage around my bedroom for the first sock. Um, Cause I think it's just sitting out somewhere and maybe like throw it in with the mail <laughs> so that I can have it to match them up. But um, I participated in, I don't know if you watch the Cozy Moth Knits. That's a knitting podcast that I super love. And if you are looking for another one, um, I would definitely recommend this one, check it out. And uh, Cozy Moth Knits hosts a virtual knit night, although it's, in the afternoon so like a knit group over zoom and I couldn't make it to the last one um, that was the first one that I had heard about but I uh, was able to hop on this one so uh, last weekend there was a there was a virtual knitting zoom and um, it was so fun there were tons of uh, well not tons there were a few podcasters that I recognized and um, people that I recognized from the comments so um, during the course of this virtual knit group, Tracy from Grizzly Knits, who's also a lovely podcast that I like, um, recommended that I look at my pictures and see if I had any 
pictures of my first sock completed and what a good idea because um, I did. <laughs> so based on the pictures, I need seven, it ends on a yellow stripe. So I did seven yellow stripes. So I got one, two, three, four, five. I have two more stripes and then I'll have to do the ribbing at the top. And again, I did not write down how much ribbing I did at the top. I was just gonna compare. It was either 12 rounds or 15 rounds of ribbing in the pink. I don't know. I'm gonna look at it and see if I can tell from the picture. If I can't tell, I might wait until I get home. I might just knit 12 rounds and then not bind off. Um, or I might just guess. I mean, who cares? It's three rows of ribbing on my socks for me. So nobody's gonna be like, uh oh, that, <laughs> that one's too long or that one's too short or whatever. Um, I might just do it. But then I guess what's the rush? Cause I don't have the other socks. So it's not like I'm gonna be wearing it. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's what's happening. Highly recommend self-striping yarn for knitting in the car. It was really fun, really easy, and you really just feel like you're making a ton of progress. So this is just a vanilla sock. It's just stacking it round and round, toe up. I'm knitting it on US size ones. That's 2.25 millimeter. And I did 60 stitches. I have no idea how many stitches or which needle um, fit my feet for hand knitted socks. I have tried a one, I tried a US one and a half, I think for one of my pairs of socks and it seemed kind of slouchy. So I went down to a one. <laughs> so far, so good. I, I'm. It's still a guessing game at this point. I don't knit enough socks to know for sure, but um, so far I'm going with ones. I kind of want to try nine inch circulars, but I've heard that you knit a little looser on those sometimes. So I guess I'd have to get a zero. That sounds awful, like so tiny. But I might try it um, one of these days. Okay, my next project is the Copenhagen Cardigan by Petite Knit. And I am actually gonna try to um, try this one on so you can see the progress. Man. Okay, last time I podcasted, I had just split for sleeves, which is kind of unbelievable because um, it hasn't been that long and I finished the body and I'm actually halfway down the first sleeve. So um, it just goes to show if you knit monogamously, you make tons of progress. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have 27 whips and then I'd actually get something done. Uh, but anyway, here we are. So this is the cardigan. It is a top down raglan. So you can see the raglan increases there and it's just knit back and forth flat um, all the way down. And there's a couple rows of ribbing. There's no true button band, but there's a couple rows of ribbing at the edge that acts as a button band. And there are these cute pockets. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do them because I'm um, looking at the Ravelry comments. A lot of people thought that they were bulky and they left them out, but I'm kind of glad I put them in. Um, okay. So a little bit about these pockets, I, it was kind of an exercise in trust. I had no idea what was going on with these pockets or how you were supposed to do it or what was happening there. I mean, she wrote it out in the pattern and actually the directions were really good because um, it worked, but it was just hard to visualize. There was a video tutorial, but like I said in the last episode, the tutorial's in Danish. So, I mean, I watched it but I still kind of was like, I don't, I don't know. I'm just gonna follow the directions and cross my fingers. So you knit, um, you knit until you get to this point and then you work on DPNs and you just knit back and forth this long flap of stockinette and then you fold it over and um, this is the inside you close up the sides with mattress stitch and it makes a little pocket. And then when you're done, you tack it down. I tacked on the one side so you could see, see it's not going anywhere. Um, you can see how it's supposed to go, but I left the other one free so I could turn it inside out and show you what it looks like. Kind of cool. I don't know. I like it. I like it. I don't know. It's kind of a weird um, size. I don't know what I'm gonna put in there. 
maybe nothing, maybe it's just a design element. Um, but that is that. The other, the, so this has kind of been no trouble. It's mostly stuck in it. I'm following the pattern. I haven't really done any modifications. The only thing I did do was, um, you're supposed to decrease when you get down here, you do some decreases. And I didn't really do that. Um, I think I did one and then I was like, why am I decreasing? It feels kind of, it's not small, but it feels like on the smallish side, it's definitely not oversized. So I didn't want to really decrease. I felt like I was going to be decreasing myself out of the sweater or making it kind of sausagey or something. So I just knit straight down um, and did the, there's a small bit of rib ribbing at the bottom and then you bind off. Okay, about this ribbing, it is super flippy right now. Like it goes, I mean, check it out. So I've had ribbing do that before. I'm kind of hoping it will fix itself when I block it, but it's really flipping. I mean, it really wants to be flipped. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, cross your fingers on that one because I don't think I'm gonna like a cardigan that's flipped up all the time. I didn't bring T-pins or blocking mats to Maine because that just felt like it was over the top. But I'm gonna try to block it. Maybe I can flatten it out and then if it doesn't straighten out, I'll just manhandle it, manhandle it when I get home with my true uh, materials. Um, the only other change I'm planning on making, and I guess I've sort of already started, the last sleeve that I knit for one of Petite Knit's patterns, when I knit the no frill sweater, my sleeve came out super skinny um, and I needed to make it a little bit longer. And I think that kind of exacerbated how skinny it was because I did all the decreases and then at the skinniest part, I just added a whole bunch of length. But I don't want skinny sleeves on this cardigan because I assume I'll be wearing something underneath um, and probably something with sleeves if I'm wearing a sweater. So, um, I've been knitting pretty straight. <laughs> Part of that was because I picked up my stitches for my sleeves with a hat size circular. What is that? 16 inches? Um, cause it was good, but then I didn't have my DPNs handy. They were like upstairs. And if I decreased too far, I couldn't use the fixed circular anymore. <laughs> so I was super lazy. So I just knit straight kind of without decreasing, thinking like, whatever, I'll just decrease later, or I don't know, but I kind of like it. It's, I mean, there's, there's definitely fabric there, but it's a sweater. I don't know. It doesn't have to be super fitted. So I might decrease a little, um, but not as much as she recommends in the pattern. My problem is I need to make notes for what I'm doing because I am definitely the type of person who would knit one sleeve and then be like, oh no, I have to match it on the other side and then kind of do a wonky job of it and it would be really weird. So if I do decrease, I've got to write that down. Or I've seen people use stitch markers. I don't, I don't even know if I brought enough stitch markers. I don't know. I got to figure that out. This is my Copenhagen cardigan. I am using, I'll show you the yarn. I am using two yarns held together. The first one is um, Issager Spinny. I don't know if you can see that. My camera's not that great. It's just my phone. Um, it is 100% wool. It's non-superwash. Um, and it's a single ply. So, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this. It's super like, you know, how do you say that? There's like some crimp to it and it's just um, really wooly wool. Then the second skein of yarn that I'm holding with it is also Issager, but it's Alpaca, alpaca 2, and that is 50% Alpaca, 50% wool, also non-superwash. Sorry, Max got to this one, so um, it's a little bit jumbled up. I hope it doesn't get tangled when I use it. I wound up some of my yarn ahead of time, but I just was like, man, I do not want to wind up all this yarn. I'm not going to get to it. I mean, let's face it, I'm not gonna knit like eight skeins of yarn <laughs> during my time on vacation. I'm a slow knitter and I'm, I just know, I knew I wasn't gonna have that much time. So I'm hoping that my dog didn't just wreck this one. He got a hold of it. Um, but I'm holding them both together. It is color number, I think it's like color number 40. I don't know. Um, I love the color, but it's not a very memorable name. 
Uh, so that's that. So hopefully I'll be able to power through the sleeve and finish up the second sleeve because this sweater I'm knitting as part of a make along that's hosted by the Happy Knits podcast, Yolanda and Jordan. And I think the deadline for that make along is the Happy Cardi Mail is either the middle of July or the end of July. They were talking about extending it, so I'm not sure if she actually did. Um, but in either case, I do need to make some progress and sort of um, finish this one up. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. Okay. So that's that. And then my last project, because like I said, I'm traveling. I didn't do too many projects, is not even, I wasn't even going to show it, but I mean, I only have three things. So here we are. This is the original sleeve that I did for my Schneeflocken sweater by Sarah Solomon of Into the Wool. Um, it is a bottom up yoked pullover colorwork sweater. And the colorwork pattern shows up on the sleeve and also at the hem. Um, I'll pop in a picture so you can see what it's supposed to look like. But I had mostly done this sleeve, but I hadn't actually gotten all the way to the top and bound off. And then weirdly, I don't, I've only ever knit one other bottom up sweater and it was seamed. So this is a little, this is new to me. You put your underarm stitches on waist yarn. So that's these. And then you put all the rest of them on different waist yarn. So I'm assuming you pick them up at some point. I mean, you must because you're keeping them alive. But um, it's going to be a mystery. <laughs> I don't know how this is all going to come together. But now that I got this off the needles, I just got it off this morning. Um, I can cast on for the second sleeve and hopefully it'll go faster. Right. It, the, the color work chart is super short, so it's definitely a challenge for me but it's like a small challenge because you don't have to get through that many rows um I talked about this before but I just want in case you didn't catch it um I knit the cuff the ribbing in a U.S. size two and then all the rest of it in a size three but for the second sleeve I think I'm gonna go up to a size four just for the color work chart because it is pulling in a little bit I'm a little sad that if it works, one sleeve is going to be nice and not cinched in and the, this sleeve is just going to be a little wonky, but um, I'm just going to live with it. I'm not redoing this sleeve, so it is what it is. Maybe I can stretch it out a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so that's my schnee flocking. And you guys, guess what? It is giveaway time. So the yarns that we're giving away, let me just show you again. It is from Madison and State. Hannah and Sarah are two friends who dye yarn together. This is like my dream, not to dye yarn, but just to have some sort of yarny friend that we could do things together. Um, they are from Chicago and um, they make the most beautiful yarn. So this is their classic sock set in the colorways Yayo and Coney Island Queen. Coney Island Queen is the mini. It is... All together 120 grams 520 yards and it's 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon hand dyed in Chicago so check it out there's like it's like a beautiful citrus yellow with these speckly pops of pink and purple and I mean seriously it's beautiful I should just order another one for myself but I did order more for myself but not this colorway I got a different two <laughs> so I don't know. It's hard to choose. It's hard to choose. But I did a random comment picker. I've never done this before. So um, I excluded all the replies because I had replied to everybody because I just can't not reply. Um, if I didn't reply to you yet, it's just because I didn't do the last few because I was like, man, I got to do this video. But I did read them all and I, um, I'll eventually circle around and reply. But the first comment picker winner was Kelly O'Connor. Okay, so I'll put it here. Kelly, congratulations. You have won Yayo and Coney Island Queen. So there are two ways to get a hold of me. You can either head over to Instagram. I am not fancy knitter. That's K-N-O-T fancy knitter on Instagram. And you can um, message me over there. Or you can just, um, I'll put a reply to your comment saying that you're the winner and then you can reply on there. Um, 
and I'll give you an, I should have a podcast email, but I don't. <laughs> this is really low tech. So um, we can figure out a way to get your real address so I can send this off to you. Um, and it'll be an adventure one day. I can go into Portland and mail it off. Okay. If you didn't, if you're not Kelly O'Connor, don't worry because you get one more chance. So the second sock set is the full skein is called Born to Die. And this mini skein is blue velvet. It's another classic sock set. So it's still 75, 20, or 85, 15. Yeah, 85, 15. Superwash Merino uh, Nylon. And the winner of this one is called Family Clan. So Family Clan, if it is you, again, either head over to Instagram and message me. I'm not Fancy Knitter, K-N-O-T, Fancy Knitter. Or um, again, I'll reply to the comment and uh, we can hook up that way and you can send me your real life name and address and I'll send these sets out to you. Um, and that's that. that. You guys, that's all I have. Oh, wait one more thing that is not all I have so um my girls are busy during the morning they have um a day camp during the morning so I checked out as you do um local yarn shops in Portland and I, so I stopped into Knitwit yarn shop a local yarn shop in Portland that is the unofficial or maybe the official yarn shop of Quinson Company, um, the yarn company that's out of Portland, Maine, or Maine, Portland, in the Portland area. And so I didn't get anything yet because I'm always super intimidated by local yarn shops. Even the one I go to all the time in Chicago and they're really nice and there's nothing to be intimidated about, but I always just, I don't know, I still, don't feel like I don't know that much about yarn or I don't really know what I'm looking for. Or I just, I just get overwhelmed by all the choices. So I just went to look this time and they have a bunch of beautiful yarns that I have heard of, but never seen in person. Like they had, um, some Madeline Tosh and they had Magpie. Um, and in fact, one of the sweaters that I really want to knit, um, but I'm waiting until I get one of these off the needles is by Caitlin Hunter. It's called Balshin? I forget, I forget what it's called, but, um, she recommends using Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock, and I can never find any of it in stock anywhere. <laughs> like, not at the local yarn store, not online, I don't know, I just, I keep missing the updates, or I'm really bad about updates. I get stressed out about doing things, um, at a particular time, um, and so I haven't actually been able to find any, and they had some at Knitwit, but I don't, I have to go back and look at the yardage and see if they have enough or if they have a colorway that I really want to use. It's um, Magpie, Swanky Sack, and then some Mohair held double, I think, um, for the color work, which weird. I love it. I'll put a picture of it here because it is a beautiful sweater with a really interesting construction that's kind of bat wing. It appears, I don't, you guys, I don't know. There's like these little T-Rex arms that come out. I think, I think I will love it. So I just need to sort of think on color combinations. And if I don't end up going with Magpie, um, some kind of substitute that would work for that. Of course, do I need to buy a sweater's kind of quantity of yarn while on vacation and schlep it across country with me? I might, I might. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so that's all. That's all I, got. I hope you are doing well. I hope your knitting is treating you well. Um, I hope that you're getting to enjoy some of the summer. And if you're in the part of the country or the world where um, an incredible heat wave is happening, I hope you can stay cool. And um, hopefully in a couple of weeks, next week or, or two weeks, um, I'll pop on with a new episode and we can see what we're up to. All right. Happy knitting. You know, it's a struggle.